Would you eat this? It's meat, but I guarantee you it's like no meat you've ever seen before. That's because this stuff was grown from cells in a lab. Clean meat is meat grown by cell culture rather than grown by an animal. From a scientific perspective, it's awe-inspiring. Lab-grown or clean meat is slaughter-free and potentially more eco-friendly because it uses less land, water, and energy. At least, that's the promise. Okay, we know what you're thinking. That's nasty. Ugh, doesn't sound right. I'm not really into, like, lab-made things. It's unnatural. It just seems off. But if the scientists growing this stuff can overcome the ick factor, clean meat could help feed our growing population in more ethical and sustainable ways. People will get used to clean meat in a hurry if it tastes right, if it feels right. If it doesn't, it's going to be a monumental thing to overcome. We visited a startup in San Francisco called Just. It's one of several companies trying to bring clean meat into the mainstream. They say they'll be ready to take a product to market by the end of the year. This is a big idea that you can manufacture meat in an entirely different way. The big question, of course, is how does it taste? We were hoping to taste it for ourselves, but they told us it wasn't ready for public consumption. So instead, we watched as their CEO ate a clean chorizo taco. I mean, right now, I'm going to be the judge of it. Ultimately, the judge of this is millions of people that are eating it. It's really good, man. I mean, I, I think the, import the important part is, does it pass the threshold, A, of is it really good? It does. And B, does it pass the threshold of is this meat? And it does. For now, we'll just have to take his word for it. But they assured us that this is actually meat. So how do companies grow it? First, technicians take a small amount of tissue from an animal, then filter it and isolate cells that they can grow. That means providing warmth and oxygen, as well as feeding them salts, sugars, and proteins, essentially tricking the cells into thinking that they're still inside their owner. The cells naturally replicate as they would inside the body, growing into something that looks more and more like food. But while they can grow muscle, fat, and connective tissue from these starter strains, the big challenge is building them in a way that recreates the meat you're used to. Nobody's anywhere close to lab growing a steak. There's different types of muscle cells, connective tissue, bone, pockets that aggregate a lot of lipids and fat, and all of that plays into the texture, the taste, the aroma, the appearance, the functionality of something in a pan or on a grill. We're really far away from being able to create this matrix of different types of cells all doing their job. Which is why you end up with something that looks more sloppy joe than sirloin. We don't want it to taste remarkable, we just want it to taste like meat. So if we're making chorizo, we don't want it to taste like A5 Kobe, we just want it to taste like chorizo. Eventually, the goal for these companies is to produce more complex structures like a ribeye, or in the case of another startup called Finless Foods, a fish fillet. Right now it's a scaling up problem. And our job is to change this into millions and millions of tons of fat. <laughs> what we do is we create non-vegan, non-vegetarian, real fish meat without the mercury and without the plastic, without the environmental devastation and without the animal cruelty. This technology really comes in two pieces. The first piece is growing these cells out in a way that is efficient and also something that tastes as good as possible. Part two is taking those cells and giving it the same structure and, and feel and look of meat. That might be a bigger challenge than it seems, thanks to the so-called uncanny valley effect. In robotics, that's our discomfort with humanoids that are close to being human, but not 100% there. That same principle applies to meat. The uncanny valley of meat, and with, with food in general, is when you get to something that's a highly sophisticated imitation, but not quite there, it forces your brain into a very small window of context, where you say, I'm convinced, I'm gonna be eating a chicken nugget this better behave exactly like a chicken nugget in every way, shape, or form, or I'm gonna freak out, because I am very in tune with what to expect. We are hardwired to make sure that we're not ingesting poison. We're hardwired to make sure that we're not ingesting something that has been contaminated or something that's even low in calories. Your brain is going to pick every possible nit that's there because that's its job. But if clean meat companies can pull it off, it could fundamentally change our relationship with meat. For example, Just is also working on a clean meat version of foie gras. That's the controversial delicacy made by force feeding a duck or a goose until its liver swells up to 10 times its normal size. A practice so controversial that it's been banned in California. But this is the guilt-free version. And this is remarkable. And it makes sense that they're starting with foie gras 
since the structure is pretty simple. And here's where it gets interesting, because while science still needs more studies to determine if this stuff will actually be more eco-friendly than factory farming, it's pretty clear that it will be better for animals. Even some vegans are okay with the idea, including the folks at PETA, People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, an organization that isn't known for compromising. People are surprised that a vegan would eat lab-grown meat or that PETA would support the idea of lab-grown meat. But, you know, I think it really makes a lot of sense when you consider that for vegans and for PETA, you know, our mission is to eliminate animal suffering. But there is at least one big ethical hurdle for clean meat. To culture the cells, typically you've needed to feed them serum made from animal blood, which is not exactly an ideal basis for a more humane form of meat. On top of that, serum is insanely expensive, and so is the final product. The first ever lab-grown burger, which was unveiled in 2013, cost around $330,000 to grow. At Finless Foods, they've gotten as far as croquettes, which contain their fish, but also a whole lot of potato, and that's largely due to cost. When we first started this project, we created our initial prototype, our fish croquettes that we made back in September. Uh, that was about $19,000 per pound. Since then, we've come down to about $7,000 per pound and are continuing to drop it. So the goal right now is to identify a cheaper source of nutrients to feed the cells. Back at Just, this is what that process looks like. It's a system of robotics and AI used to sift through a giant database of plant ingredients and they claim to have recently identified plant-based nutrients for clean meat that would be much cheaper and more ethical than using serum. So if Just, Finless Foods, and other startups can successfully scale up, we'll soon have lab-grown meat that could be more sustainable and certainly more ethical than the stuff from factory farms. As long as you're okay with it looking like this.